Hey there, welcome, welcome. Yes, I'm talking to you. I'm so happy to have you here with me. So, getting right into the topic, there is a TikTok creator. Um, her name is at creative.gen, right? So that's K-R-E-A-T-I-V dot J-E-N. And she says something, our white sister here says something very significant that... I'm sure for her, you know, unwittingly, inadvertently applies to the African-American community when it comes to black, male, female, romantic relationships. So I'm going to go on ahead and turn her up on my Mac and hopefully you get all of the sound out of this. So, um, all right, let's go. For any relationship between masculine and feminine energy to work, the feminine must submit to the masculine. But this must be the feminine's choice and cannot be forced by the masculine. So before the feminine can choose to submit to the masculine, the masculine must go through a testing process held by the feminine, wherein the feminine tests the structure and the sturdiness of the masculine to determine whether or not the masculine is worthy of being submitted to. This testing process not only confirms to the feminine that they can trust the masculine, but it reiterates to the masculine that they can trust themselves. Masculine is the great I am. Masculine energy just is. From that place of being, the masculine does not need to test anything because anything around them or outside of them is superfluous. So if a man asks a woman, what do you bring to the table? They are confirming that they indeed are not. <laughs> Right? I'm pretty sure any of the anti-black woman hating black men listening to the first part portion of what she was saying was like, yeah, yeah, the masculine is the great I am. And yeah, yeah, the masculine just is and any feminine is required to submit. But then you see her full logic ending with any man who is asking you what you bring to the table is proving he's not masculine because it, it's not a question a masculine man should be asking. What do you bring to the table is how can you support me? How can you help me? How can you aid me? How can you, right? The masculine just is. Masculine is the great I am. Like she said, the masculine is capable, right? Like Adam was created and then Eve was created as a what? Right. Anyhow, so I think it says something like, you know, it's not good that man should be alone. Right. It was created as a companion. So in reality, all you should be offering, all you should need to bring to the quote unquote proverbial table is your companionship. That's what it's about. That love, that loyalty, that nurturing, that X, Y, Z. Right. Anyhow, that's not what I wanted to focus on at all. What I wanted to focus on was this. In these relationships, the masculine must be submitted to. There's no way around it. Even if the couple is two women or two men, the femme has to submit to the masculine. If there's two men in a relationship, the femme has to submit to the masculine. If it's two women, same thing. That's literally how it's got to work. However, it's the feminine that has to choose the masculine. So, so often they'd be like, yeah, well, you know, men choose women. It's like, no, you don't. No, no, you don't. You might like us, but we get to say yes or no. Like we have to vet you. And see that you are qualified to give in to. We must vet you. See who you are, what you're made of, what you're like. Your track record, your resume in order to let go like that. It's like that trust test where you have a person stand behind you. And as you are in front of you, the coach says, fall backwards. Many people struggle falling backwards because they're just like, you know, can I trust this person? And when you do that with couples, oftentimes it proves, all right, well, clearly there's something wrong because this person could not submit to 
the authority of you catching them. Like I'm going to be safe and I'm going to blindly, literally blindly trust this person because you're not facing them when you fall backwards, right? You're not looking at them or when they're going to stick their arms out to catch you. You know, this is something people did in businesses and and they strengthen, you know, office morale, company morale with with these kinds of practices as well as within relationships. So in our relationships as African-American women, what we do wrong, which is the reason we have these war stories and we have these scars and this, oh, I submitted to a pookie and lost $10,000 and I did this and I invested all of this in him. And it's just like he showed you the signs that said, I'm not a man. I'm a boy. I'm a child. And our relationship is going to be that of a mother and son. He showed you in more ways than one. You cannot submit to me. I am irresponsible. You get me a phone, I will lose it. You get me a car, I will park in the wrong place and get it towed. I'm a loser, he says. I can't do it on my own. Everything I do, everything I have, everything I am is because you give it to me. And that's not how the masculine is supposed to function. That's, that's a child. That's childish. And the only human or animal, like the only human interaction a woman should be having with something like that is, is an actual child. So where black women go wrong is that we don't cut off these men that we know we can't submit to because we're lonely. Because we want to be with somebody. Because he's good in bed. Because he looks good on our arm. Because people will leave us alone and stop asking us when we're going to be coupled or married or pregnant when we have this guy around. He can knock you up. He can make you look like, you know, you've got a relationship. You know, you'd be surprised at how many dusty, filthy, misogynistic women wave around their little pookie like, oh, I'm better than you because I'm married and you're not. Oh, I'm better than you because I'm coupled and you're not. Oh, I'm better than you because I'm in a hotel union without a ring and you're not. And it's like, dude, you're with a whole child that you support and take care of. He wouldn't have food to eat. He wouldn't have a washcloth to wash himself with. He wouldn't have a pillow and a blanket to sleep on, in, under, unless, unless it was for you. You're his protector and provider. There, there's nothing desirable about that. It wears every woman out. And you wonder why the women who live like this, you can see like their beauty being eaten away from them. Like you can see it just kind of being sucked out of them because they're investing a type of energy that is masculine a type of energy that is masculine that's not for her to do i mean okay sometimes you have masculine women and effeminate men and they can do that i think a lot of african-american women have done their darndest to become more masculine in order to accommodate effeminate men and after you know black women do that then they get humiliated nanny nanny boo boo you are masculine and it's like well fine so, so it's a joke, right? And, and you felt that shame, the, the burn of that insult, right? Now what do you do? Well, when a man shows you he can't pick up the bill at a damn coffee shop, when he shows you that he can't pick up the bill after dinner, when he shows you that he can't, you know, if you didn't come with him, Uber you there, Uber you home, whatever it is, that's it. Gold digger or not, call it what you want to, even though, I mean, I'm sorry, but a lift ride is not digging gold. I mean, what is that? Less than $30? Boy, bye. When they show you that they are incapable of these things, because women are like, oh, I'm going to show him I'm independent and I'm going to show him I don't need him. And I'm just like, no, it's not about what you need to show him because you're already beautiful and a companion. You're, you're already that. He needs to show you that he can facilitate this life for you, that he can facilitate your companionship with him for you. So if you can't make a date happen, if you can't make it, no, why would I go any further? Now, a lot of black women, because of the conditions that we have been in, the artificial conditions, you can call it, you know, environmentally produced or not, you know, racism, white supremacy, whatever it is. Okay, it's there. But still, if only the strong survive, then, then 
take me to the strong. Take me. What is that song that Christian take me to the king? Don't it don't. It's not take me to the king. Take me to the king. Take me to the one who has withstood, who has earned his masculinity. I'm telling you, there is a right of process. There, there is a, a right of becoming a man. And that's why it's so important in other cultures when you see it's like, okay, today you will go kill a goat. You will slaughter the goat. You will take out the innards of the goat. And after you take out the innards of the goat, you will skin the goat. You will wear the goat skin, right? They have, you know, some 16-year-old do all of this, right? By himself after watching his dad, you know, her, you know herd goats and do whatever for how many years. And he's just like, all right, here's a, here's a sharp rock, my guy. It, 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 it's all you. And it's like, show and prove. Everybody's watching. A nervous teenager, show and prove. Show these people you a man or go home, son, boy. Show and prove. If you don't know how to hurt these goats and you don't know how to make a, how are you going to take care of a wife? Who's going to be pregnant and weak with a kid? How are you going to continue your family name, your legacy, anything? Go away, little boy. And, and, what, and what happens if he does it right? Everybody's chanting his name, singing his name, decorating this man in, in, in flowers and, and, and gifts and, and painting his face and, and wanting to touch him. And, you know, he gets to go and pick a girl and he's so happy. And not just that he's happy, right? Because let's say these are arranged marriages. She's happy, too. Don't know him, wasn't the guy she had a crush on, but she's looking like, wow, that's, I, I, I just witnessed the man right here. This guy stood day and night, you know, on a plank, you know, with no bathroom breaks and then climbed down and, and, and did everything we needed him to do to this goat. You know, he caught one, you know, he caught an Impala, you know, and, 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 and cut it up, slaughtered it, took out the insides and, and, and made an Impala skin rug for me. Dude is capable. I'm safe here. And I'm telling you, the feminine, the true feminine, she's going to choose safety over lust every time. She can want to sleep with ooh, ah, so-and-so with all his muscles and height so bad. So she can want to sleep with him so bad. But if, but if him and Mr. Reliable p- propose, she's marrying Mr. Reliable. She's saying I do to the man who can not the man who can't. And so when you say I do to the man that can't, or I will, based on, you know, the love of your relationship, I do being marriage, I will being, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, I agree being hotepsual unions, you know, whatever. Like, you're forcing yourself into a masculine position that you can't hold up. You can't keep it up long term. And if you can, congratulations, you're just, you know, you're just masculine energy in a female body. I mean, that happens to people. You know, hey, is what it is. But that's the order of things. So African-American women, we're out of order. We are out of order when we take these felons who can't help us with anything who, oh, I just need a leg up. I just need to get by. No, Nika, that's what your halfway house was for. You people get out of prison. You go to a halfway house. They make sure you get hired because they don't want you to reoffend. You have a job. You have somewhere to stay. You can save money. Like, no. No. It's a rehabilitation program. Reintegration program back into society. They literally do this for you. And their last four to six months of serving, you know, their time, if they've been good enough, they get to go to one of these places. Four, four to six months paying no rent and you have a full time job. After getting out of that place, you're telling me you need somewhere to stay. Why? Because you bought Jordans and a polo sweatsuit. Huh? Because you needed Jordans and a polo sweatsuit to stunt. Huh? Because you needed electronics. Because No. Low key. Uh, smarter women are not checking for guys wearing Jordans. We're just, we're just not smarter women, better women, finer women. I mean, more feminine women. We associate Jordans with bad character. 
we associate Jordans with like, like, bro. And I don't care what rapper you know who's wearing Jordans and how much money he has because, okay, gold and dusty. But even without that, it's like, I would be more impressed if you had on some non-name brand shoes, but you showed me what you spent on Jordans. It's like, yo, I just, you know, purchased this stock. I own this much of Star- Starbucks. I own this much of Moderna. I own this much of BP. I own this much of Ford Company. Like, that's where it's at. To a woman who's worthy, to a woman who knows. But I mean, if she's impressed by your Jordans, it's like little kids being impressed by other little kids' Jordans. And it's just like his mama bought him that. Or the girls in high school, like, oh, he got a car. His mama bought him that. His parents got him that car. That's not a protector and a provider. Like, like, what are you doing? Like, he's just a little boy. At that age, yeah, you get to just go for cute. You get to go for cute, funny, charismatic, whatever. You also get to go for, you know, nerdy, quiet, introvert, whatever it is, you know. For me personally, I've always been attracted to a brain, Okay. Some of the relationships that I, like, I don't think I was ever an official girlfriend in high school. Not even one time. Maybe one time. Yeah, one time. Once I was an official girlfriend. Um... But most of the time, it's just like, oh, you know, he talks to chocolate, blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, you know, are you and -and so-and-so talking? Yeah. But... No sex, no sexual relationship, no, nope, nope. We hold hands, we spend time together, we talk, you know, and, and that's it. Because for what? Some sweaty little boy who don't know how to wash his private parts the right way? Like, I'm, I'm, for what? That's focus time. And I was never, I, I could never get that whole, you know, I went to school with a girl who was 16 sleeping with a 27 year old. And I was just like, for the life of me, that's not cute for the life of me that, that, that I think that that's scary. And I'm glad I was that way because I'm fertile freaking myrtle. And I would have ended up, man, thank God for my mom and the way that she raised me. That's all I got to say. But like, I wasn't a girlfriend in college. I wasn't a girlfriend and I was a girlfriend one time in, in high school and Okay, that's weird. Uh, I'm 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 stumbling because I I know I preferred black guys growing up, and and I I I'm the same way. But in middle school, I was only ever a girlfriend to a white guy. Hey, Trevor, <laughs> and I was only ever a girlfriend to a white guy in high school. Yeah, that's it. And these were very short lived like relationships. But it's so funny because in terms of like, who could do the most for me, like it was definitely them. Right? Because, you know, the African Americans were were in the same poverty I was in, you know, they had the same, you know, whatever, you know, their, their mom had food stamps. And I mean, my mom was a cosmetologist. So in the in the 90s, making, you know, over $25 an hour is a big deal, you know. But still, with four kids, that's a lot. Okay. <laughs> that's a lot. Anyhow, um, that is completely besides the point. Um, but what I wanted to say is what I said before, and this is how we're out of order. So um, I've noticed all over YouTube that a lot of African-American women, like, you know, that there, there's outrage among us when somebody tells us we're doing something wrong. And I understand that it's because we do effing everything. And it's just like, well, man, if somebody would help us, we wouldn't be doing stuff wrong. We're, we're all we got. Nobody offered guidance. Nobody offered help. We just stood up and said, fine, I'll do it. I'll do it myself, said every black woman ever who didn't have any help. I get it. But it's like the fact of the matter is sometimes when you don't have a leader, you don't have guidance, you're doing something without leadership or guidance. And sometimes you're, you're doing it all wrong. African-American women, by and large, we don't know how to choose men. We don't. We don't know how to choose men. 
why is he fine even on the table? You are all the pretty your relationship needs. And don't be out here with it. I mean, I guess there are some exceptional cases, but I was about to say, don't be out here with a dude with longer hair than you, prettier than you. Like, <laughs> what are you doing? Now, even though he's so fine, I mean, yeah, I understand, you know, Mr. Uppity's a looker, but that wasn't, like, like, like that wasn't the thing, you know? Uh, M- Mr. Uppity takes care of me so completely. And here's the deal, because I would, um, I would agree that I have some daddy issues, but he takes care of me in the way that a father takes care of a daughter. As in like, and, and th- that's part, part of my underdevelopment. So I'm not going to sit here and pretend like, oh, I'm a content creator and I have a voice. So I'm perfect. No, no. And just because your parents were married, like my parents were married, doesn't mean that you can't come out with daddy issues. If daddy wasn't a daddy, then, then that's just what it is. But like, I think I give off very strong, very whatever, you know, capable woman, but like getting to know me, it's just like, I have a lot, I have a lot of little girlisms. I really do. And him being a dutiful father, like, like he knows what that's about. So the way that he protects, the way that he provides, the way that I have everything that I need. Like, I'm not over here like, oh, you know, I bring this, 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 this into the table. It's just I'm with a masculine. Right. And what did she say? She said the masculine is the representative of, of the I am. I am that I am. So that's that that is a source that is like when, when people say God, the father. They're saying God, the source, like the source of humanity, the source of my help from whence comes my help. So everything that I have, like, I mean, I, I can literally look around my entire apartment, my entire apartment. It doesn't matter. I, I was in I was in my closet. There's a couple of walk in closets here. Um, I was in my closet and my mom was like, where did all those clothes come from? And I'm like, oh, Mr. Uppity. And she was like, because here's the deal. I used to be an ascetic. I used to be a very religious person. And, you know, everything about being a super religious person is like, oh, I'm, I'm in the world, not of the world. And I only own these few garments and, and whoop de whoop whoop whoop. So humble, you know. And so I've never been a materialistic person. Now I understand that, um, even though I'm not materialistic still, like I definitely understand that uh, status symbols can get people to respect you, fear you, treat you a certain way. So um, some of my status symbols now, like um, (laughs) some of these status symbols I can kind of use to get people to leave me alone, right? Um, I'm a person who's routinely victimized, bullied, picked on, and some of these things get people, it's it's like, what can you say? Because, you know, you're going to clown me about, you know, X, Y, Z, your, your little hotepsual union. And then I'm just like, "Ah, I have a ring. What do you have? Shut up. Like sometimes these status symbols can be used as weapons as well. And I am a person who needs protection, obviously. Speaking of which, um, I guess I'm going shopping this week for a gun and I am so excited. I can't wait to go to the ranch, y'all. I'm, I just know I'm going to be an incredible marksman. I just know like bullseye, like that's just going to be part of my life. Like I, I already know it, it's just, it's going to happen. Inshallah ta'ala is going to happen. So yeah, back to the main subject. Black women, that's where we're going wrong. And that's where we're teaching our daughters wrong. Because we thought, you know, we could just tell everybody the Tyler Perry movie advice. Does he have a good heart? And oftentimes, some of these broke men that you're, you're with, they don't, they don't even have a good heart. They're in your car. They took your car. They dropped you off at work in your car and then went to go pick up another woman in your car. They don't have good hearts. They're playing a game. And you don't know how to properly vet a man. No, you're not supposed to pay for anything. I, I don't know how else to tell you. And you're like, oh, well, then you won't like me and then you won't be with me. Sis, that's the point. That's the point. 
Dun, dun, dun. Another one bites the dust. That's the point. Well, then I don't want to go out with you. Oh, bye. Well, then nobody's going to go out with it. Sis, you only need one, though. You only need one. Body count. You only need one anyway. This is how you weed out the undesirables. It's just like these private golf clubs and whatever other, you know, secret society. Like they, they have fees. You can't be an active member if you don't pay a certain price. Ask these black Greeks. You can be you, you might be a member because you pledged or whatever, but you know, you're not an active member unless you paid your what? Your dues. So if you're if you have ten ten men on your little roster dating thing that you matched with on whatever app you're on on whatever app you are on, and <sighs> Nine of them were just like, man, you're crazy. I'm not giving you my money, man. My money's hard earned, man. Okay, bye. Don't let loneliness threaten you. Keep in mind that even to have matched with these guys, like you have to have something. Otherwise, you you wouldn't have matched to begin with. Let that give you some confidence and some patience. Like, oh, well, whatever. If you don't want to pay for a cup of coffee, like I don't want to see you. I don't, I don't want to see you. I'm not about to put myself in a position where I get attached with you to the point where I might potentially share my sacred space with you, my womb and everything attached to that. And you're just some cheap. I don't know how to be a man. I can't sustain a relationship. I can't protect and provide men who are like, oh, we hate gold diggers, blah, blah, blah. They don't really have gold to dig, sis. And you're trying to seek the means of nearness to those people. Men who actually have gold to dig, they, they like bougie black girls. They like the black girl in luxury, you know, aesthetic. They like rich auntie vibes. They like gold diggers. They like women who want to spend their money. And I'm not saying wipe your behind with it, but you know, here's the deal. Me and Mr. Uppity do not live together. This two-bedroom, two-bathroom two apartment is my own. Now, when he got me the apartment, he asked me for a key. He asked me for a key and left it up to me to say yes or to say no. Do you hear me? He left it up to me to say yes or to say no. Now, of course, I said yes, right? But what I'm, I guess what I'm trying to say is that, how do I say this? I guess I can come back to that because I don't really um I don't really have the words. But basically, men who can when they're liter- when they're really that capable and it's really not that much of an imposition, they don't mind. Like I'm not out here, you know, with his cards getting, you know, uh Celine bags and Chanel bags even I mean I love a Celine bag. I mean I have this thing with the letter C because my name starts with the letter C. So if it's a Chloe bag, a Celine bag, a Chanel bag, I'm like, "Ooh, but if it's Prada, I'm like, oh, whatever." <laughs> right? Cuz it's a letter P. If it's Fendi, it's like, "Whatever." <laughs> but me and my little letter C, I'll be like, "Yeah." <laughs> <laughs> it's my initial, especially Chloe and Chanel because they both start with CH and chocolate starts with CH. So don't hold me. All right. I I can be corny like that. But I'm just saying like I'm not wiping my behind with his money. But at the same time, I I cost a fair amount a month. I I, I cost I cost a good three thousand dollars a month. And that's a modest ex, uh, estimation. 
So that's not like when I need a flight somewhere or when I need, like, that's, <laughs> yeah. I, I cost Mr. Uppity a good $3,000 a month. I mean, that's every bill. That's that's <laughs> water, sewage, garbage. It's rent. It's, you know, food, water, uh, blankets, toiletries. Like, I, yeah. And there's not a complaint. Like, I could see if that was like a $3,000 bag, right? And then it's like, okay, mm, right? Because Mr. Uppity is not, you know, he might be in the, in the six-figure area, but he's not in like, well, he used to make around that much. I was going to say he's not making like, you know, three, four hundred, three or four hundred thousand dollars a year. But like, you know, he's, he's where he is. So it's like, I live comfortably, that black girl in luxury, like, I believe, <laughs> hear me out, I believe that someday soon Mr. Uppity is going to be a millionaire, okay? And I have every reason to believe that about him. Um, every reason. Every reason, okay? Um, I've seen this man go from glory to glory to glory, from level to level to level. Um, and that's great. And then I can go and we can all, <laughs> me, Crystal, and Mr. E and Mr. Uppity <laughs> can go on a date and be married. I mean, and be married, go on a double date and be married. Um, but my life now, like I talk a lot about the, the black girl in luxury movement and how much I love that movement um, because it, it adds another narrative to who black women are and it breaks so many stereotypes. But in reality now, like, you know, my life is, my life is not luxurious. It's, it's comfortable. Some people will say, well, it's a luxury to have a man to take care of you. And it's a luxury to, you know, X, Y, Z. And I understand that, but I'm just saying like, I mean, I'm very grateful for the extra space. I don't need a two bedroom, two bath, but I have one because it's very comfortable. You know, I have my own bathroom. Mr. Uppity has his own bathroom, you know, like X, Y, Z. But in reality, Mr. Uppity is a homeowner. So it's not like, I mean, there's only one rent that he's paying and it's mine, right? I mean, you could talk about the kids in college and paying for that, but that's something different. But um, I'm comfortable, I'm consistently comfortable. And that comes from choosing better. It comes from choosing well. It comes from, and here's the deal. You don't have to bump your head the way that I've bumped my head in order to understand, you know, who, what, and how to choose. It helps to have women aunties to take little girls and and put them in the way of this kind of knowledge like if somebody asks you out the mannerisms that come from that is like like good manners is if you ask somebody out you pay that's what you're supposed to do so if you don't want to pay i mean refrain from asking people out And I mean, even if it doesn't come up, if you go to somewhere with a guy and you guys just end up meeting and he's not like, let me get your coffee or how much is your coffee? Don't order till I get there. Whoop de woop woop woo. Let me cash up you this and this. Leave in the middle of the date. I'm going to the bathroom. Never come back. He's none of your business. And if somebody didn't raise him to know that he's supposed to pay for something as basic as a coffee date, because here's the deal. My love, my love, my love, Miss Shira Star Goddess, uh, uh, Shira Star Goddess, she doesn't believe in coffee dates. I do. I, I believe in coffee dates, okay? Um, I believe in half-hour coffee dates where you go to meet somebody. Like, literally, we just matched on Bumble or Tender, whatever you guys are on, um, and you wanted to meet up in a public place where everybody is safe, Okay? So you meet up, you have a drink, right? Because you don't want to just sit there dry. I mean, how are you going to have a conversation with with your tongue and your lips dry? You know, you're going to have to have something to wet the whistle. 
And it's like, all right, well, got to know you. You seem like a cool guy. Maybe we can meet up again and we, we can go somewhere again, you know, to get one to get to know one another. I mean, dates aren't just for fun. They're for getting to know another person. So I believe in coffee dates because it's easy to get out of. There's an easy escape because sometimes you just don't know people. I don't want to go on a first date at some five-star restaurant. I don't want to go on a first-time date at Daniel's Broiler, right? Where the food is so freaking amazing and the steak and the crab and the shrimp and the presentation and everything costs so much because not only is he going to feel like I owe him something, I'm low-key going to feel like, man, I, 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 I feel like I at least owe him my company, because he 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 pulled out all the stops. I, I should at least be here until the end of the day. That's what I'm going to feel like emotionally. Now, if you're a stronger woman than that, more power to you. But I'm not. I'm going to feel guilty. <laughs> I'm going to feel major guilt. I'm going to be laughing at jokes that aren't funny. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm going to be accommodating because I know that we're going to walk out of there with like a $300 tab. That's important. I I think that that's important. I mean, if we have all the courses and you know, I'm I'm ordering a drink that's not bottomless, so if I have 3 of whatever that I'm drinking, I'm just like, you know, just look. Appetizers, main courses, desserts, uh, sides, drinks parking good god like tips i'm going to i'm going to feel bad but i'm not going to feel nothing about leaving you on a coffee date you and this tall americano can kiss my behind <laughs> okay you and this grande frappuccino can take a hike right so th- there's that freedom with a coffee date so even though, you know, my Shira, she's the guru, she's the one who, I mean, she, she's gotten me to such a place in my life. I really do owe a portion of my relationship with Mr. Uppity to Shira and Crystal, right? I really, really do. Um, I've been listening to them for a lot longer than I've been with him. And they have molded me into a way where, I mean, I was always the kind of woman to attract a high value man, but I wasn't always the one who knew how to choose. I did the the faulty choosing, right? I did the fairy tale. Oh, you know, if I kiss this frog one day, he's going to turn into a prince and, and beauty and the beast. And, 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 and if I just love the beast, I can break the curse. No, the hell you can't. No, even if you can, you shouldn't bet on it. You, sh- you shouldn't bet on it. Men are supposed to show effort. They're, they're supposed to. They're supposed to. They're supposed to flex mind and muscle to be with you. And if you are trying to accommodate a man so that he doesn't have to, you're screaming, hey, I'm not a challenge. Hey, I'm not worth it. I'm not worthy. Even if that's not what you intend, even if you're some church girl who's God fearing and it's just being compassionate, that's not the, 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 the message they're getting. They're not understanding it that way. And there's nothing you can do about their nature, not understanding your charity that way. There are women in Islam who, you know, because there's that bride price, there's that dowry or mahar that a man has to pay, right? And there are women who are just like, oh, I'm not materialistic. I'm just gonna, you know, he, he doesn't have to give me anything. He can give me, you know, he can give me a copper ring for all I care, right? Because a man has to give you something. And she thinks I'm showing him my deen. I'm showing him my taqwa. I'm showing him how religious I am. I'm showing him that, that, that I'm not materialistic. And all he's seeing is like, man, this was easy. He's not seeing the level of your, your God-fearing. When you say you don't have to give me nothing but a copper ring. Because the masculine has to invest in you in order to stay with you. Must invest in you in order to stay with you. So when he's flying you back and forth, (laughs) so 
sorry. I'm, I, I'm just thinking about Miss Jeopardy. When he's flying you back and forth and these round trip tickets is $400 and he's lifting you back and forth from each airport. And, you know, it's it's dinner. It's five star hotel. It's room service. Honey, <laughs> he, he can't get it back. It, it's an investment. And nobody wants to let go of an investment because you want an investment to be an asset. And assets increase with value over time. That's why the, the look, I'm telling you guys, the, the sugar baby, the prostitute, the escort, like these are not equal. And, and a mistress and, and a wife and a girlfriend, like, like the, none, none of these things are equal. If you're a woman who a man wants to stick around you're not equal to that which does not okay you're not equal to the one night stand to the jump off to the whatever like it, it's not the same men have a hard time walking away from who he spent his money on and i don't mean one time i mean over and over again that's why some of these men walk away from their kids so easily because they never spent anything on them <sighs> Let me not go there because that's not what the video is about. But as African-American women, let's admit to ourselves, right? Because we have to name the problem in order to solve the problem. I chose poorly for myself. I was cultured in a way that caused me to choose poorly. And now that this is right in front of my face and I'm aware, I'm going to choose better. Period. And if some man rejects me and says, well, bitch, you wasn't that cute anyway. Okay. Fuck you mean. What do I look like paying for it? Okay. Bye. I don't even know you. Why would I? Be? Okay. Well, you're a brute and you have no manners. You have no cooth. You have no class. And I wouldn't want to be on a date with a person like that anyway. So thank you for making my decision easier. Appreciate you. Cheap manner for cheap women. Exquisite manner for exquisite women. Good manner for good women. Bad manner for bad women. Let, let, let's divide like the gosh darn Red Sea. Let's part ways. These are filters. Only show me this and this and this type of apartment. Only show me apartments with walk-in closets. And like when you go to Zillow or rent.com, apartment.com, and you put in those filters, only show me this, this, and that. These are filters. You don't even want to see a guy who can't pay for a coffee date. It shouldn't matter what you order at Starbucks. It shouldn't matter if, I mean, because chances are I'm just going to get something tall and hot like myself <laughs> i'm gonna get a tall latte <laughs> a birthday latte double shot whatever but it's it's a freaking and i hate starbucks i think star i don't hate starbucks but like i prefer other coffee shops i just think starbucks is the mcdonald's of coffee it is the ghetto um it's so common and if you're not a coffee connoisseur then yeah you probably think you're doing big stuff with starbucks but um no i've been a barista too many times and I, I know my coffee anyhow you should be able to go to if you're at a starbucks with him and you get you know a tall latte and you want to go home with you know a vente green tea strawberry acai with with rose hips and and 10 pumps of classic instead of you know what whatever syrup like like that's your prerogative he's not gonna leave starbucks spending more than 30 dollars and chances are a whole lot less than that it's probably a 15 dollar date between the two of you if if it's two drinks like bro if you can't do that i don't want to see you i don't want to i don't want to smell you <laughs> I don't want to see you, smell you, talk to you, touch you, meet you, nothing. I think as black women, we're, we're, we're so concerned about being friendly that we don't realize that being exclusive is a big deal. Being unreachable and untouchable to a degree, it's a, it's a, it's a good deal. 
you know, that's how people are like, oh, she's so high sedity and highfalutin. You know what? And they never call those girls ugly, though. They might call you sedity and uppity, and, but they don't, they don't call you undesirable, do they? They're just complaining because they can't reach. You're out of reach. That's all. It's a good thing to be out of reach for certain men. I'm telling you, that's a reward for the man that you do choose. It's a flex when, I mean, dude can't take my girl. Mr. Mr. Uppity, if I would have told him, no, you can't have a key, I will open this door for you when you come over. It's like, it's a place he pays for. He doesn't know. Of course, I don't know anybody. I moved out of my state and I'm a very introverted person. So he knows me. But I'm just like, I, I could have had all kind of people up and through here. But it's like, Mr. Uppity, no. It's just like, you, you, you can't knock my chick. I'm good. He can leave me here by myself for days on end, not come over, not visit, nothing. He knows I'm here by myself. I mean, we randomly talk throughout the day and I'm walking through the apartment. He knows I'm here by myself. Period. Because where am I going to go? Sis, you tell me. <laughs> You tell me, didn't I just tell you he has millionaire potential? Where where am I going? Where? Where am I going? The answer is the answer is nowhere. How am I going to replace him? How am I going to, how am I going to, here, here's the deal. I'm not saying I'm not worthy. <laughs> of a quote-unquote another Mr. Uppity. But personally, because of the chemistry, because of the cultural similarity, the personalities, the chemistry, like, like on top of what his personal achievements are, it, it's too rare of a connection. And that's why I'm saying, like, like where am I going to go? So yeah, he can leave me here. In, in in a two bed two bath and and whatever else and and not be here for half the time and he's confident what kind of an what what kind of an imbecile would i be if i was like all right then i'm leaving you for joe smo on youtube <laughs> i mean what how why he knows. I don't, ha I don't have to tell him he knows. So anyhow, all I'm saying is that part of loving on ourselves is telling ourselves the truth, right? Telling ourselves the truth in order to enhance our own character, and decisions. I believe that there are millions of black women, and I do mean millions of African American women, right? There's like 46 million of us, at least half of us. I would say two thirds of us. Yeah, I'm gonna say that. I'm not gonna say half. Two thirds of African American women are going through crappy relationships that they don't deserve trifling relationships that they don't deserve. There's a reason the movie Waiting to Exhale did so damn well. There's a reason black women are like we memorize the lines and certain, you know, in the color purple and in Tyler Perry movies and and Waiting to Exhale when Angela Bassett's character burned down that car. There's a reason, there's a reason, there's a reason why these things impact us the way that they do. Come on, my favorite movie growing up was What's Love Got to Do With It? Angela Bassett has such a special place in my heart. I love this woman so much to the point I started looking like her. Now, we can have that conversation at a different time, but I'm telling you, sometimes you love a person until you become a part of that person, an extension to some degree of that person. Like in my teens and early 20s, like I, I would hear it all the time. The people who I was the biggest fans of, people who didn't know me would be like, hey, Beyonce. I see you, girl. Okay, Angela. What's like, like, bro? Anyhow, 
We relate to these movies so much because it's a common experience among us. It's the same reason why, why so many black men relate to baby mama drama so well, because it's a common experience among us. What are good black women doing having these experiences? At church every Sunday, going to the altar, crying, praying, being these good women, you know, now I've got these kids and I have to take care of them on my own and God be my strength, be my rock. I, I, all I have is my faith. And I'm like, she's a good girl. She, should, she shouldn't have to go through that. But you make choices and choices have consequences, even though you did it w- with the best heart. Well, I just thought that I gave, if I give a brother a chance, I thought that if I just believed in him hard enough, if I just prayed for him hard enough, if I just believed hard enough that this and this would happen and that it would be okay and that he would appreciate it, but he's not going to. He's not going to, especially if you're not his preference. Oh God, if you're not the pre, oh Lord, if you're not the preference and you're investing all that into somebody who's literally not qualified to be with you because he showed you in the beginning that his masculine is hurt and defunct. He showed you at the beginning that his masculine doesn't have what it takes for your feminine to rely on. I've met so many black women who are just like, you know, my, my husband is like my son. <laughs> I treat my husband like I treat my kids. And men are so offended by that, but I'm just like, look how you act. <laughs> look how you act. Let me know in the comment section if this was beneficial, if I helped you with anything, if you kind of see things a little bit differently. I would love to have a live stream where we just kind of talk back and forth and prep one another for the rejection of low value men. I'm telling you, and you don't have to do nothing, but (laughs) look on YouTube. I'm so cursed and rejected by low value men. Now, are there cursed going to mean anything? No, because I'm better than that and usually curses only work when you deserve the curse okay that's a universal law kind of thing mutable but you know whatever so you can look all over the place and find low value men rejecting me calling me names talking about me and low value people men and women as well right but when you get to the higher value people (laughs) all over YouTube, when you get to the black Greeks and, 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 uh, the African-American guys with master's degrees, they're like, Ooh, uppity, Ooh, uppity, uppity is a 10. Ooh, uppity. I love uppity. Uppity is my girl. And I'm like, that's the point. (laughs) That's the point. Would you rather cast pearl before swine who will trample it underfoot because they don't know the value Or, you know, present your pearls to a person who's just like, wow, that's a freshwater pearl. I can't even imagine how much that costs. Can I touch it? Can I hold it? Can I see it? Wow. It's a no-brainer. So you can't be slighted because, you know, the you know what is fear likes to fancy you as as worthless or whatever. (laughs) Come on. Let them. And let their counterparts as well. What is it? Second Corinthians come out from among them and be ye separate. Be ye separate. Don't you know that a little leaven leavens the whole bunch or leavens the whole loaf, whatever it is. I haven't read the Bible in a long time, y'all. It's okay for low value people to put you down. I used to say this to people all the time. So many times when I get a job or become a part of an organization, There are men who don't value me, don't think I'm pretty, are not kind to me. But the men who always look out for me, value me, flirt with me, are soft on me, it's always the alpha male every single freaking time. And what do I care about a beta or a zeta who can't do me right when the alphas and omegas are on my team and for me? If they are for me, if they are with me, who can be against me? It doesn't matter because the manager is in love with me. You can be a crappy coworker to me. You can make it hard on the floor with me, but when we go and sit with the manager, he's got my back. 
that's the point. It's okay not to be valuable to everybody. You just want to be valuable to the right people. Love left us up where we belong. I love you. I hope that this helped. And I know that this was long. Lord have mercy. This is 55 minutes. Y'all, I've been talking for an hour. Why did y'all let me talk at you for an hour? <laughs> okay. Um, That's a hot mess. She long-winded, y'all. <sighs> I'm uppity in the mouth.